In 2005, I was fortunate enough to go to Taipei in Taiwan to the Congress of the International Council for Nurses. And at that Congress, I actually gave two different presentations. One of them was on stigma in relation to HIV and in relation to AIDS. There were well over a hundred nurses present at my uh, presentation and they were from different parts of the world, each and every one with their own story. And as part of the presentation and a workshop with it, we explored some of the impacts of stigma in relation to both HIV and to AIDS in their particular parts of the world. It was really important to notice the way in which there was an intersectionality cutting right across uh, the whole notions of stigma and especially in relation to uh, HIV, whether as prevention, as treatment or as care, and also then in relation to the AIDS-defining illnesses. And there was one nurse in particular who told her story and it's always stayed with me. So I did the presentation looking at um, the role of stigma and all of a sudden she stopped me and she said, look, you nurses from the West, you haven't got a clue when it comes to stigma and HIV. She said, let me tell you my story. And this is her story that I want to tell you now. She said that she works on a ward with around about 30 patients every night. She's the only registered nurse and she's usually working there with just one other person who may be a healthcare assistant. So the two of them for about 30 patients. And she said that because of poverty, they're all on this one ward. But if this ward was actually in a hospital in the West, over 50% of the patients would be in intensive care units, not out on a general medical ward. So she and the healthcare assistant care for their clients overnight as best they can on a 12 hour shift. She said she then has a four mile walk home um, as soon as she finishes work after these 12 hours. She walks home and she said the first thing she has to do then is to prepare breakfast for her family. Some of them are going out to work, some of them are going to school and she prepares the breakfast for them. They all go and that's her time to go to bed. She said, but by the time they leave the house and she sees them walking away, she then has to remind herself that 50% of her family are living with HIV.